What if the most cutting-edge discoveries of quantum physics were already understood thousands of years ago by meditating sages sitting cross-legged in Himalayan caves? This isn't science fiction. It's the startling convergence between modern science and Advaita Vedanta, an ancient philosophical tradition that continues to challenge our fundamental understanding of reality. As our most sophisticated instruments probe the quantum realm, they're revealing a universe that bears an uncanny resemblance to what those Hindu masters described millennia before the first particle accelerator was ever dreamed of. In the misty dawn of human consciousness, while much of the world still grappled with primitive understandings of reality, a remarkable wisdom was already flowering in the foothills of the Himalayas. The ancient Hindu sages, seated in meditation on riverbanks and mountain peaks, were peering beyond the veil of ordinary perception and articulating insights so profound that modern physics would take millennia to catch up. Their philosophy, known as Advaita Vedanta, whispers across the centuries with an unsettling prescience that continues to stun scientists and philosophers alike. Consider, for a moment, what these ancient masters proposed. That the fundamental nature of reality is non-dual consciousness. That the material world as we perceive it is an appearance, a play of consciousness upon itself. That the individual self is, at its core, identical with the universal consciousness. These weren't merely poetic imaginings, but carefully reasoned philosophical conclusions drawn from rigorous introspection and analysis. The question that haunts modern thinkers is simply this. How did they know? Quantum physics emerged in the early 20th century, shattering the comfortable Newtonian universe with revelations that bordered on the mystical. The solid, predictable world of distinct objects gave way to probability waves, quantum entanglement, and observer effects. Matter, at its most fundamental level, dissolved into patterns of information and potential. The universe revealed itself not as a collection of separate things, but as an undivided wholeness in flowing movement, as physicist David Bohm would later describe it. Does this sound familiar? It should. The Advaita sages had been saying essentially the same thing for thousands of years. The Sanskrit term maya is often translated as illusion, but this misses the subtlety of the concept. Maya isn't claiming the world doesn't exist, but rather that it doesn't exist in the way we conventionally perceive it. Behind the appearances lies a unified field of consciousness, Brahman. This echoes quantum field theory's revelation that seemingly solid particles emerge from underlying quantum fields that permeate all of space-time. The parallels are uncanny and unsettling. Even more remarkable is the Advaitic understanding of consciousness. While Western science has traditionally struggled with the hard problem of consciousness, how subjective experience arises from physical processes Advaita Vedanta approaches the question from the opposite direction. Consciousness isn't an emergent property of matter, but the fundamental ground of all existence. Matter emerges from consciousness, not the other way around. This perspective is gaining surprising traction in contemporary scientific circles. Renowned physicists like John Wheeler propose that information might be more fundamental than matter his famous it from bit conjecture. Others, including Nobel laureate Eugene Wigner, have suggested that consciousness may play a fundamental role in quantum mechanics. The growing field of quantum biology is revealing how quantum effects might operate in living systems, potentially even in neural processes. What makes this convergence truly eerie is the method by which these ancient insights were attained. Without particle accelerators, without mathematics as we know it, without any of the technological apparatus of modern science, the Vedantic sages claim to investigate reality through disciplined introspection. The mind, they insisted, when properly trained, could perceive directly what our instruments can only approximate. Is this possible? 
the scientific establishment has traditionally been skeptical of introspection as a reliable method. Yet this skepticism has begun to crack in recent decades. Neuroplasticity research has demonstrated that meditation can physically reshape the brain. Studies of long-term meditators show measurable differences in brain structure and function. The mind, it seems, can indeed be trained to perceive in ways that ordinary consciousness cannot. The implications are profound and disquieting. What if these ancient masters, through their rigorous contemplative practices, were able to directly perceive aspects of reality that our science is only now beginning to uncover? What if consciousness, properly trained, can function as an instrument of investigation as precise in its way as any particle detector or telescope. Consider the Advaitic concept of neti neti, not this, not this, a contemplative method of negating all limited identifications to reveal the underlying reality. This bears a striking resemblance to the process of scientific elimination, where hypotheses are systematically ruled out to approach truth. The difference is that the Advaitic method applies this process to consciousness itself, using awareness to investigate awareness. The unity described by Advaita Vedanta finds echoes not just in quantum physics, but in other domains of modern science as well. Systems theory, ecology, and network science all emphasize interconnectedness and emergent properties that transcend individual components. The increasingly prevalent view of reality as informational and relational rather than substantial aligns with the Advaitic understanding of the world as manifestation rather than independent existence. Even the Advaitic understanding of time bears intriguing parallels with relativity theory. The sages spoke of time as a relative phenomenon, part of the manifestation of Maya, while the ultimate reality, Brahman, transcends temporal limitations altogether. Relativity similarly reveals time to be not an absolute, but a dimension interwoven with space, subject to distortion and perspective. What are we to make of these parallels? Coincidence? Projection? Or something more profound? A genuine convergence of knowledge reached by radically different methods? The answer remains elusive, hovering at the edge of our understanding like a quantum particle refusing to commit to a definite position. Perhaps most compelling is the Advaitic insight that the observer and the observed are ultimately one, a perspective that resonates with quantum measurement problems and observer effects. As physicist Sir James Jeans famously remarked, the universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. The ancient sages would not have been surprised they had already discerned through their inner explorations that consciousness is not merely an observer of reality, but its very essence. The individual mind, they taught, is not separate from the universal consciousness, but a localized expression of it, like a wave on the ocean, distinct in form, but not in essence. As our scientific understanding continues to evolve, these ancient insights may prove not merely poetic metaphors, but profound intuitions about the nature of reality. The gap between the contemplative wisdom of Advaita Vedanta and the cutting edge of theoretical physics continues to narrow, raising tantalizing questions about the relationship between inner and outer exploration, between subjective experience and objective reality. What other wisdom might lie dormant in these ancient teachings, awaiting validation by future scientific discoveries? What aspects of reality might still elude our instruments, but not the properly trained human awareness? The convergence of these two great traditions of human inquiry, one ancient and contemplative, one modern and empirical, may ultimately reveal them not as competitors, but as complementary approaches to the same profound mystery the true nature of existence itself.